Hi, I've got an annoying problem. Whenever I try and do a narration for my videos on video editing software, my laptop fans kick in, and I've got this awful hum in the background. Listen to this. It's actually so annoying that I need to do something about it. And I've got this crazy idea I want to try. I want to see if I can cool my laptop with ice. So let's make it happen. This is what I want to build. A waterproof box, which I could open up, load with ice with water, close it, put my laptop on top, and be supplied with cool air. So I've got all the pieces cut out. In terms of size, it's as big as my laptop, and it will measure 4 cm in height. One thing I'm still to do is to drill holes for the vents. So I'll be taking care of that. I'll also need a couple of vents to let the air into the box. I put them on each side, and with that I can start assembling. I've got the pieces for the bottom layer ready. I've got some leftover silicon to glue them together. A few clamps, and a little spatula to spread the silicon around. I'm sure to remember to peel the protective film off before I start. At least from the inner side of the box for now. I chose silicon as my glue, partly because I had some lying about, but also because it sets clear. Hot glue, for example, becomes opaque once it sets. I thought this would help with the aesthetics, but to give you a heads up, it's gonna make it worse. The good thing about this stuff is that it's viscous. It means that the parts stay upright with no additional support. Having said that, I'm still using clamps to make sure that everything stays in the right place before the glue sets. I'm also adding L shapes at this stage. Their purpose is to guide the air within the box, delay it and give it more time to cool. Once done, I'll leave this overnight to set. In the meanwhile, I can get onto the top side. And 200 holes later, this is what I've got. Apart from the vents, I made a few holes and a couple of cutouts for the hinges. And I'll connect them using pop rivets. For those who don't know, the idea is to align the holes, put the rivet through, mount the gun, press, and pop. And that's the top ready. It's actually been two days, and ideally at this stage I would like to do a water test to check for leaks, but for some reason the silicon is still a little bit sticky, so I'll get on and glue the top. I'll allow another couple days for the silicon to set. Now what I've done is, I've also glued the lid, but I kept the protective film on the inside. Once I remove it, the actual acrylic will be free to move, and it will have a thin layer of silicon to sit on, which will make a seal, preventing the cold air from leaking out. Okay, now I can do a water test. I've got some paper towels to help me see if there's a leak. I'll fill the box with water all the way to the top, and if nothing happens within a couple of minutes, I'll call it a pass. Unfortunately, it's worse than I thought. You can see the water seeping through at the bottom. It seems that the sealant I'm using, though good in a bathroom, does not make strong enough bond to handle any pressure. I should have gone for something else. Never mind, I'll fix that with hot glue. If I was thorough, I would strip the silicon and start over. But this is just a proof of concept design, so I'm putting glue on seams as they are. Let's try again. I've waited a little bit. We'll say it's good enough. Now the same way I made the seal around the lid, I want to make sure that only cold air from the box enters my laptop. That means I need to make a couple of silicon rings around the vents. I'm also covering the hinges while I'm at it. I don't want to scratch the bottom of my laptop. A little bit of shaping and it should be good to go. Of course now I need something on the other side, so my laptop stays level. With the masking tape off, I'll need to wait for another couple of days for the silicon to dry. Just looking at this box, with using silicon, I never stood a chance making the box look good, did I? But that's not the point. See the gaps? 
I need to take care of those if I want to make sure that my laptop draws air only from the box. And trimming the tops with a pair of scissors completes the box. Let's run some tests. I'll want to monitor the temperature, so luckily my multimeter comes with a temperature probe. It doesn't look like much, but it's fairly accurate. The temperature is set to be displayed in degrees Celsius, so my room's at 18 at the moment. I'll keep the box empty for now. I've set up my laptop to run a stress test, and this will serve as a control. I'll start the test in a minute, but I want to have a split screen for easier comparison. So let me show you what I've done the second time round. I filled the box with as many ice cubes as I could fit, and I poured water over it. Remember the L shapes? The idea is that if I pour enough water, the air will be forced to travel through the predetermined path, and once I'm finished, I will be able to pour the water straight out. On the other hand, if I didn't have those, I could fill the entire box with ice. Having said that, I can still do this if I crush the ice. For now, this will do. I let things to settle for a couple of minutes, before the temperature bottomed out at 11 degrees. So let's run the test. Again, it's a stress test, and I enabled most importantly CPU and GPU stress, but also memory and my hard drives. Let me show you the comparison between the two runs. The control is on the left, so no ice, and ice cooled is on the right. The top trace shows the real-time data of the hottest CPU core, whichever it might be. The second trace shows the GPU temperature, whereas the last two traces show the real-time RPM of both of my fans. Also, we can note the temperature of the box, as well as the hardware utilization shown at the bottom. If you look, you will see that only now do the fans kick in in the cooled case, whereas they've already been running in the control. You can also see that my CPU and GPU are a couple of degrees cooler, but that's all too small of a difference to be significant. Let's speed up the test and see what happens. You might have noticed that the temperature in the cold box has increased. This is because the air continuously moves through the box, and it doesn't have enough time to cool in the fervor. Now that the system stabilized, you can see that it stays a couple of degrees cooler in the ice cooled case, as well as the fans run a little bit slower. So, points to the cooling solution. But that's not nearly enough to solve my problem. I could try and add more ice and less water to shave a couple of extra degrees, but the fans would still be running, so... In conclusion... Listen to this. 